You're listening to the Platte River Bard. Yeah. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Platte River Bard. This is Chris Berger. And I'm Sherry Berger. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Or belated New Year, but it's still January, so that's okay. Absolutely. And we're getting back in the swing of things after being out sick for so long. Oh, yes. And so we have some things to share. Yes, that's right. Now, we have opened up a blog on our website that will include press releases from all over the area, including Kansas City and parts of Iowa, as well as Nebraska. So, check there for more information about Theata, especially if you are not a social media person. Right. You can check out our website at platriverbar.com. Yes. And we are getting back into the podcast swing of things and have some exciting things coming up, starting with... Today, we have for you Moira Mangiamelli, who is directing Boy at Snap Productions at the Ghost Light Theater. And actor Jay Nelson, who is the lead role in Boy that is opening February 2nd. Moira and Jay talked to us about this complex play written by Anna Ziegler, and you won't want to miss this conversation. Now, performance dates for Boy are February 2nd through the 4th, the 9th through the 12th, and the 12th is a Monday performance for the convenience of people in the industry, and then the 16th through the 18th. There will be talkbacks after the February 2nd and February 9th performance immediately following the show. The ASL performance will be February 9th. Snap Productions at Ghost Light Theater is located at 2221 Thurston Circle, Bellevue, Nebraska, their new space. That's right. And for tickets, go to snapproductions.com. And now, on to our interview with Moira and Jay about this very topical and relevant production about gender and sexual identity. We hope that you can come see this meaningful drama. And we are here in the Ghost Light Theater at Snap Productions. And thank you very much for inviting us. We are in the actual theater. Yay. And we are talking with Moira and Jay Nelson. And they are doing Boy. That is by Anna Ziegler. And thank you very much for inviting us into the theater. Thank yes, you. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks for having us coming. And, and the snowy, snowy night. Yes. We got out here and... and <laughs> You guys joined us, and we're so happy to be here and yes, to be able to talk about you. this production that you've been working so hard. And you've lost a little bit of, of rehearsal time because of the snow, but oh, you're geez. catching up quickly. Yeah, we lost a, we lost a week. Yeah. Uh, did oh, you lose a whole week? We oh, did, geez. yeah, with all of the different... We had the snowstorm at the beginning of the week, and oh, that so lost no. us. And then <laughs> so yeah. it was just one of those things. But we have a really incredibly talented and hardworking cast. And right. They, you know, they've already made up what we missed. So it's, cool. yeah, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> so this is a play that was written by Anna Ziegler, and it's based on a true story. And I was going to ask you too, because I was reading about it. Mm -hmm. It's, it was really, it really happened in Canada, but they're setting it in the United States. Right. Is that okay? Okay. I was reading that a couple of places and the way they worded it, I... I wasn't quite certain if I understood that correctly. Yeah. Because in my place, head, it was in Iowa the whole time. <laughs> right. it, took place, no, it took place in, I mean, the original story uh, mm -hmm. took place in Manitoba, Canada. But this wow. is set in, um, like some of the, the doctor scenes are in um, Boston, uh, okay. Massachusetts, and okay. then uh, the other are near, well, I'm trying to remember where you're. I'm from Esterville. If, Esterville and Esterville. Um, the Spirit Lake um, area. But I guess you're still living in that area. Yeah, we're close by. I don't think yeah. we stayed exactly where we moved to. It's just right. we get out of the out of the small town eventually. Right. right. So this is more of a serious type play. Yes. If there's. It's not. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's not. This isn't a broad there's comedy. Not, there's no. not a little bit of joke here and there. It's it's pretty serious there, the whole way is. through. I mean, I think there's some there's some humor. You know, Good. situational yeah. humor. Yeah. yeah. You know, but. Yeah, most part it's telling a story that's pretty serious. And right. Well, it is based on a true story. So what? Uh, what is sort of without maybe spoiling it? Because if you haven't seen it, come see it. Mm -hmm. um, the general sort of story of of what boy is about. 
So, do you want to take this? Please, I don't oh, want okay. Yes, yes. I, you know, it is a very serious show, but at mm-hmm. its core, I like to think of it as a love story, to be honest. Nice. The playwright does a really lovely job of focusing in on Adam's relationships rather than his situation, is what I like to think of. So we, we dive a lot into his relationship with his doctor. Um, okay. Adam is in an accident very young um, when he is a baby, and they decide that due to that accident to raise him as a girl. And wow. so um, from then on, he has a doctor that is then helping. Uh, he's unaware at this point and going by the name Samantha. So that is why it's Samantha and Adam is the character. Okay. And for 15 years, he's raised as a girl and you get to dive into his memories of those times. And then you also get to dive into his relationship with his parents. And then his first love relationship is really what what the the whole thing is coming to at the end is is that love relationship okay. and, and how he gets there and how he grows as a person to be able to love. Yeah. Right. Mm. Very nice. And the real story had a twin in it. Is that correct? But that's yeah. not in the play. A twin well, it, isn't in it, the play? It is talked about, but we don't meet, oh, okay. we don't meet his okay, twin brother. Okay, we never see the twin. He's okay. not actually in the play. I okay. see. He does talk about it, the fact that it was a, a twin. So. Okay. Interesting. So is all is all based on the premise of this one doctor who who felt like if you raise a child as a certain gender, they they will embrace that and become that gender regardless of their makeup. Right. The the um, doctor in real life was named, ironically, Dr. John Money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he, what uh, a doctor, name I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Money <laughs> believed that um, gender was more uh, decided by nurture than by nature. So okay. that, it, you know, you could decide, depending on how you were raised, you could just decide which gender you wanted to be and, and follow along with that. And mm-hmm. so it's because of that, it's a really, really timely story mm-hmm. for where we are right now yes. and the whole fight for gender identity. And uh, when, when was this written? Was this? Is it, it was tw- um, 2016. Okay, so it's been around for a little while. But okay. it's set in, uh, what, 60s through? In right. Yes, the play 90. spans from 1968 to 1990. Yeah. Okay. 68, that's right. 68, yeah. so it yeah. starts, and, and that historically is, is when this... So the story that it was based on took place. Right. Well, the yeah, the sixty-eight, the scene that t- takes place in nineteen sixty-eight is when the twins are um, just a little over a year. Okay. So okay, yeah, okay. So they were born late sixties. Okay. So what's one of the challenge the challenges that you've had with this particular story because it's so serious and so personal? Is what's one of the challenges that you've had? to be able to identify with these characters. Yeah, it's quite interesting playing both adult Adam and young Samantha. Um, So I go anywhere from a six-year-old up to a 23-year-old. I'm 24 myself, so it's very easy to relate with Adam in a lot of ways. Um, Yeah, I was going to ask, do do you play all the ages? And you do, okay. Yeah, yeah, so it's interesting. And and I don't just play six-year-old. It goes, I play an eight-year-old, I play an 11-year-old. So it's finding those different ways to play those different ages and how they're developing and how how physically that goes, vocally that goes. And then, um, you know, I'm non-binary myself. And so I've gone through a lot of experience myself with gender identity and finding out who you are. And so I was raised female myself and now am gender neutral. And so I feel a lot of similarities and parallels with Adam's story. And so it's been a very personal experience going through the script, it but it's been extremely rewarding at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Yeah. Right. Cause you get to tell the story. Yeah. It feels like so. I get to tell a story that is mine. That's yeah. like part. Yeah. yeah. At least in part yours. Yeah. I assume yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I imagine there are vast swaths of this that you're like, Hey, somebody spying on me. Oh, some of the lines <laughs> really get me even just yeah. running lines. Some of them, they, they hit. So this is such a well-written play. Wow. I think that, that, um, she really captures that experience of, um, you know, the closest thing to Adam would be someone intersex, someone that's born. Um, the whole thing is that his genitals are mutilated. So um, okay. that's where we start that they are trying to figure out what to do. Um, and so okay. they think the doctor, how he states it, is to raise her as a complete 
female rather than an incomplete male, which is such an interesting construct and way to think about it. <laughs> yeah. Because right? you want to think that, you know, gender is a construct. That's what we've, we've understood to, to this day. And mm -hmm. so uh, at this point, it's, it's such a, a tough call that they make as parents. Um, yeah. They don't know, they don't mean to do it in a harmful way, but uh, obviously at the end of the day, uh, gender is who you are. And at the core, Adam is a man. And so being raised as a female is so harmful to him. And it really shows okay. for trans people, when you are a trans man and you, you feel that to your core, that is who you are. And so when you're being raised as something else, it can be really harmful. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. That is fascinating. And, and it's fascinating that this was, I think it's really neat that she took something that was sort of taken out of the child's hands and, and now they're dealing with this sort of dual life almost. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think I was reading, did they not tell little, uh, the, the little kid? Yeah, Samantha. Samantha. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing. The doctor says uh, you can never tell her. And so they don't wow. tell her until she's a teenager. She's 15 when she finds out. Um, wow. And so, yeah. So, See, that's interesting in itself that they didn't know. Right. They yeah. followed, you know, yeah. they, this was a, uh, even in uh, the, the real story, it's rural and it's right. the it's late 60s areas. you know there was well, yeah. no there was no resources there were no I can't was imagine. no place to find out and nobody was mm -hmm. doing anything mm -hmm. about gender but this doctor was and they saw him on tv and heard about him and read about him and they thought oh well this seems like you know he can help us sure so uh, yeah, yeah. That, i think that that moment when he says you can never tell her it's like yeah, and, wow. And, and to come from a place of good intentions, obviously. Yeah, obviously of the course. parents just want so to do what's best for their, be, for their yeah. child. Yeah. yeah. So, so obviously, uh, the character never went through puberty then, is, is what I... Is there's that how I'm understanding it? There's hormones involved, so there's medication involved as well as therapy. Okay, so, so it is are. also medical. There's surgeries, talked about surgeries that are done. Okay. And so yeah. it is, it's a full sort of transition that they're they're putting their child through wow. um, okay. like a medical transition mm -hmm. and my favorite line at that um, one of my lines in the show is um, when talking about being raised as a female is not knowing I had ever been anything else but also knowing you know that you, and, that and so it's that else. it's that that it's it's no one had to tell her she knew deep down that um, she basically got to live that trans experience Samantha did of of knowing deep down there's a scene where she talks to the doctor about wanting to be Luke Skywalker so bad that that is that she saw Star Wars and and wants to be Luke Skywalker and is battling with that feeling of of I don't know what this means right and the doctor says oh you you had a crush on him and oh yeah Samantha says no I want to be him yeah 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 uh, yes, be, yes. Being from that time, I can. I want to be Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, who I, didn't? Who didn't? I, I wanted to be Luke, but I also, for some reason, didn't understand why I liked Princess Leia so much. <laughs> and then, as when I got older, I'm like, oh, now I know why. <laughs> wow, she's so cool. <laughs> she was. Uh, but yeah, yes. that's interesting. The gaslighting of of that then to say right. no, no, you don't. Yeah, yeah interesting. Yeah, that is. Got to yeah, really and that happens script. all the way through in the in the scenes with the doctor. Mm -hmm. And the doctor stays w with the family and and with the therapy and the medical stuff all the way through. Right till uh, she finds out. Yeah, she has a period where um, she does. She starts saying she doesn't want to see him anymore. She she starts acting out in school. She won't go to school. She's crying all the time. Okay. Um, so it, it's a little bit before that she finds out that she she just can't do it any longer. And so they, they kind of shut the doctor out at a certain point. Um, but otherwise, she's known the doctor her whole life okay. and trusts him and okay. believes that he wants what's best for her too. Sure, sure. Mm. It's oh. heartbreaking. I mean, yeah, it's God, it sounds like you're, 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 really you're, you're setting us up for heartbreak here. <laughs> it <laughs> is. But I think, uh, I, I love what Jay said. It It is a love story. There is... Um, when I f first took the uh, assignment on and I read the script and 
and tried to think, I always try to think of some kind of a metaphor that will help me put myself in the right place as a director and see the, uh, a big picture. And I said it feels like it's a puzzle, but, um, but there are lots of pieces that don't fit together. There are pieces missing, in the, and it's almost like there's puzzle pieces from three different puzzles, mm -hmm. oh, and we're trying wow. to put it together. Um, and, and it's Adam trying to figure out where does he fit in everywhere he turns. He doesn't fit there, he doesn't fit here, he doesn't fit, and he doesn't know why. Mm -hmm. um, until you know later on, and even then, still doesn't isn't isn't really able to find that place. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. we and you, that will be reflected in the set, and um, and and we've talked a lot about what that means and how he takes this journey through the past again, looking at the past, looking at what made him slash her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what all of those things that happened and all the things that created and all of the uh, turmoil. And he's on the precipice of trying to have his very first grown-up relationship mm -hmm. with somebody that he really, really cares about, but he doesn't really know how it can work. How to do it, mm -hmm. yeah. How's it going to work? Right, because especially then I think identifying uh, your orientation and identifying how you relate to your gender right. uh, had to kind of be the same thing. Right. And yeah. now we're kind of in that time where they can be two different things right yeah right. and yeah. the there is a touch of that in the script as well about about knowing that he was always attracted to women also and and knowing these things okay. and and how they do relate they do intertwine I know my own personal uh gender identity came out as first I came out as gay I was uh then discovered gender from there and I know that that's an experience of a lot of people and they do really relate to each other and so I think that's a great point to make about it mm -hmm. interesting yeah, yeah. interesting okay. yeah that yeah, there's like just so it. much I just don't know and and everything changes right. and everybody has a different story right that's the thing there's so many different ways that people sort of come at it mm -hmm. but and that I think that's the thing because <laughs> you know I'm old and um, us too. I've been around for a long time. <laughs> and, uh, navigating, sometimes navigating the the way the world is, it, it is true. There is so much we don't know, and yet we think yeah. we know every, especially about gender. It's like for forever yeah. and ever and ever and ever. When there was boys and there was girls, yeah. and you know there was nothing in between. And maybe the, you know there was same sex attraction, but uh, no, I yeah, think always. this, mm -hmm. you know, and so many people are still so resistant, and probably always will be resistant to the idea that there can be anything other than that than that yeah. assignment. So. I love. I, I feel like that what Anna Ziegler has done with this script is has really given us a way to look at it, that is uh, is real, is true, is honest, um, but it comes at it from a very personal perspective. For sure. Um, from watching somebody that, as we watch Adam's story, we come to 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 care for him, to love, and we feel it's all about thinking. Oh my God, that's. It's awful. It's awful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To watch him go through this pain. And if, if we can take that <laughs> mindset and that um, perspective yeah. into the world today, mm -hmm. what a difference it would make in the way that we, we deal with and we treat trans people and non-binary people. And For instead sure. of just always saying, why does everything have to change? Yeah. <laughs> well, because <laughs> everything changes. Right. Duh. I know, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. And I always heard it described to me best as, uh, and please tell me I'm dead wrong, but that gender is that people are like, it's more like a spectrum. Think of it more like yeah. a spectrum right. and you can be, you know, yeah. anywhere sort of on that spectrum. I'd even say less of like a line spectrum and more of space. There's X, Y, Z axes. You can be uh, okay. anywhere. People, gender has become such a wide community of people that you know the the whole lgbtq community is is so vast and people have found that they just feel the most comfortable with you know there's there's neo pronouns z's there uh you know oh, yes i've heard those that. Yes. kind of things there's there's people identify with a lot of different things and i think it's great that that's where we're headed it's obviously a long road to get everybody there oh yeah it's but so you know um it really helps the internet being there for young people now, which is one thing that's missing from this show. Yes. Is, yeah. 
There's yeah. something you don't think about. That's right. They're, they're so alone. Not just Adam, but his parents. And I mean, every, mm-hmm. there's, yeah. yeah, as far as Adam knows, he's the only person, person the in the world, world like, like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and yeah. you said that it was you know. in a rural community. So even more isolated, mm-hmm. doesn't he have the advantage of being in a city and around more people and maybe running into right. someone who is yeah. maybe he might similar? Not even know a single gay person at that point in his right. life. It's and so it's possible. like, it's like I was very lucky to grow up on the internet and see that community and and see it and know I'm not crazy. I'm. I'm yeah, you're not like this other people, only and I can relate. In the yeah. world, yeah, yeah, and that's something that I think is important about where this takes place in time is that. There is no way for him to find that that outer community, um, reach out to people. All he knows is his family and this doctor. And yeah. that's why when trying to make connections, it's so difficult because he's going through something that no one else is going through. Something sure. that m- many, many people are not going to go through. Right. But it's, it's such a unique situation. Well, and the loneliness yeah. of that. You mm-hmm. know? I can't imagine. Right. I can't imagine. And not being able to... Well, when he finds he finds out later that mm-hmm. he was born male, okay. Yes. So to not even know that through this process, right. yeah. yeah. A- a- let alone all the problems that come with being a teenager. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know? And and oh, by the way, <laughs> yeah. you're a teenager. Right. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is weird, anyway. Yeah. You're and really so I I did I researched sort of what it was based on, and then when I met with Joey and she told me a little bit more about it, I I just yeah. I really wanted to do it, so I'm I'm really grateful that Snap decided to that's great to ask me to direct it. It's been, I mean, it's been tough, but yeah, as I said, I I, people are not going to believe this cast. Uh, they're incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and speaking of that, yeah, uh, Jay, how did you come to audition for this? And when you heard about it, what were you like? Oh, it's my part. Because I must have it. Story. It has to be just the right person, really. It is such a funny story about how I found out about the audition, actually, because my friend sent me a DM on Instagram, and it happened to be Kyla, who plays my love interest in the show. Okay. (laughs) And so she's actually the one who told me about the audition. Um, She had sent me it the morning of the audition, and I kind of decided to just go on a whim because I saw it, and I thought, that's a story I could tell. Like, that's something I could get behind, and... um, went in there, did my best (laughs) that I could and and got the call the next day. And I was really excited. And it's been super affirming for me too, as a person to be able to play this part, to be able to play, you know, both genders and be able to play with my own identity and, and how I act, my mannerisms versus how do I think that the six year old girl acts versus how I think the 23 year old man acts and, and Mm -hmm. what Adam's view of masculinity really is. And that's Mm -hmm. something I, you know, I struggle with myself is, is, is wanting to feel more masculine and and how do I portray that? And how, how do I make myself feel my most comfortable? And, and so playing with those gender identities and levels and layers to the part has been so rewarding. And it's, it's definitely one of my favorite parts, if not my favorite part I've gotten to play. It's just, it's one of those juicy roles that you get your hands on and I'm always finding new things about him every night. And oh, yeah, it's been, cool. it's been a really rewarding experience. So now this is a small, smaller cast. Mm-hmm. Just I'm five. A, just five. Mm-hmm. So we have Jay. We have Kyla. Your, Kyla, who recruited you yes. to come here. <laughs> mm-hmm. and Kyla plays Jenny, um, Adam's love interest. And then we have uh, uh, the mother and the father. So we have um, Jaron Kais, who plays Adam's father. And Lynn Devereaux, who plays Adam's mother, and then um, Dale Hartshorn, uh, who designed and built most of the set, Yay. also plays um, Dr. Wendell Barnes. Oh, and he's, the, so. of course, the doctor. Yes, that's right. We're going to have the Wonderful. doctor character. That sounds great. Excellent. I like this. This is, this is, I know it was a stupid question, why would you pick this? This is so absolutely appropriate uh, for, for this time. And especially with everything that's going on and all the conversations that everyone's having. And uh, it, it couldn't be more sort of timely. Right. Yeah. And, uh, well, and, and Snap and, is back, and this is part of your programming. I know. Programming, and so and, and, right. and, and well done for, for that. Well done for not shying away from, oh, that's too hard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I, I can see how people look at it and go, 
man, I don't know if I want to touch that. I'm, right. it's, it's nice that you guys went, yeah, let's do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like I said, for me, so affirming, it's a story that needs to be told. Yes. And knowing that in Omaha, someone's telling these types of stories is so important and just great. Yes. And it wouldn't surprise me if, if you hear some folks say that to you after the show. Thank yeah. you for this show. This has been sort of affirming for them. Mm-hmm. We hope and so, because that's why you do it, right? That's yeah. exactly I, why I'd you love do to hear it. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, me too. Very nice indeed. Well, thanks for talking with us today. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, you for inviting so us into the theater. We always love to come yes. to the theater to talk to folks. That's then we kind of we get to see the stage. Yes, we get to peek at everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Mara, <laughs> and thank you, Jay, and yes, thank you. Break all of the legs. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. much for having us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening and supporting the arts in the Platte River area and beyond. Please subscribe to our podcast so you are sure to catch all of our future episodes and join us on social media. See you next time on the Platte River Bard. <laughs>